GFB, and we're going to do an installation of our new DB Plus for the uh, BMW Mini N18 engine. Now this kit actually has two pieces and when we get into the installation you're going to see why. Uh, there's a lot less clearance than there is on the N14 engines, uh, which is why we've had to include these two pieces. Uh, an easy way to identify the N18 is to, uh, to look at the pipe across the front of the turbo here and you'll see that this one is bolted to the front of the compressor cover. Um, that's not the reason that we need two pieces but that's an easy way to identify an N18 engine and if you have one of those that's why you'll need this particular kit. The first thing we're going to do is take the intake snorkel off so you can get at the valve. Now this one's an aftermarket intake but uh, that might change the installation. Yeah, the next thing we'll do is move the, um, the water bottle out of the way and zip tie it in a place where it gives us more room to work underneath. Now, there's a convenient hole just on the um, on the rail here that we can use to run a zip tie through there. Just to hold the bottle out of the way while we're working on it. Okay, now we're going to take the factory diverter out. This is it down here, just below the turbo. Uh, it's quite difficult to get to and you can see the lack of space uh, behind the diverter valve and around these mounting bolts. And that's the reason for having the two pieces in this new DV Plus kit. It allows us to take this solenoid coil off and move it further down in the engine bay so that it doesn't get in the way. First thing we have to do is take the electrical connector off. There's a little clip that you have to release as you push it off. And now it's also a bit easier if you take the wastegate actuator hose off and move it out of the way. And uh, I'm going to use a uh, five millimeter hex key to get these bolts out. Okay, and there is the factory diverter valve. Okay, the next step is to install the first half of the DV Plus kit onto the factory solenoid. What we're going to do is separate the valve components off the solenoid coil. And just while we're doing this, um, it's worth having a look at your standard valve just to make sure that it, well, to see if there's any damage to it. This one's actually in good condition. There's no tears on the diaphragm. And the other part that can fail is this, these thin plastic pieces can end up cracking. Little pieces that can end up going through the turbo. So that's part of, the, part of the reason why you would want to replace this in the first place. So we're going to put that aside. The factory spring comes out and that gets put aside. And we use the GFB supplied spring on the solenoid coil. Followed by the plunger and then this piece here. Now the holes, the bolt holes are asymmetric. Uh, they can only go on one way. Once you get it lined up just click it together. Now there's a bracket underneath here that we need. We also need those bolts, the factory bolts. Now this bracket allows us to mount the solenoid. Now it goes on this way. So the electrical connector is pointing up and the mounting bolt is to the left. Then we're going to put this aside and install the second part on the car first. which is this piece here. So this is the actual valve mechanism that controls the, uh, the air coming from the turbo. So 
So this is what we bolt onto the turbo compressor itself. This mounts down further in the engine bay where it's out of the way and these are joined with vacuum hose. So effectively this is this is a DV plus that has been separated into two components. This controls the valve. So we're going to put this aside, we'll put this onto the turbo and then we'll mount the, uh, the solenoid. Okay, so for this part of the installation you'll see that the o-ring on the face here has already been installed, you should just double check that. Slide the spring in. Now I've just applied a little bit of engine oil to the outside of the piston. And you can see that's a nice smooth sliding fit. Now again these holes are asymmetrical so they can only go in one way but the easy way to tell is the riding will be upright and the vacuum nipples will be facing this way. Now it's a good idea to use your finger just to hold that piston in so it doesn't slide out whilst you're getting it located here. Here we have the DV Plus installed. The riding's facing upwards, the bolts have all been tightened up, and we're ready to install the solenoid. Okay, in this next step, we're going to install the solenoid assembly down low in the engine bay. Now, there's a convenient bracket with a a blank, well a spare hole here that's not being used that we can uh, bolt the assembly onto. It's going to be pretty tricky to get it on the camera but uh, basically it is straight down underneath the turbo intake. Let's see if we can get a look at that. See right next to uh, there's a blue connector and there's a black metal bracket with a hole in it that we're going to mount the solenoid onto. Okay, so here's the hole in the bracket that we're going to be using just here. I'm going to slide the solenoid down and then this fastener here, I'm just going to Hook that over the bracket and through the hole. And then the, uh, the lock nut that comes supplied with the kit, we just need to thread it onto that stud. Now that's the tricky part because although the camera's buried down there, I have a lot of trouble getting my hand to fit down there. Right, I've got the nut started on there. Now you'll notice that you can rotate the solenoid, which will actually help us while we tighten up that nut, because I can't get much travel on the, uh, on the spanner here, so it's actually easiest to rotate the solenoid. Before I get that too tight, I'm going to rotate the solenoid upwards like that, which is going to make it easier to attach the hoses. Now the hose is supplied with the kit and it's been cut to about 30 centimeters. That's good enough. That gives it plenty of room to, to run it around the engine bay wherever it needs to go. Okay, and I'll rotate the solenoid 
back down a little bit. I'll pull those hoses through. So I'll point that down there. That just makes it easier to get the electrical connector on. And then I'll give it a final tighten on the lock nut here. Now while we're down there, don't forget to reconnect the electrical connector. And we'll also do the wastegate actuator hose. Okay, so down there we've got the solenoid mounted. The last thing we have to do is make sure we uh, connect the hoses correctly. You want to identify which one is which. So the top hose is port A. That's this one here. So we want port A to go to port A. Which is that one. And this one of course is port B. And that is the installation done. Now all we have to do is put the intake back on, put the water bottle on, and we're ready to go. Job done.